Implementing a camera system is an essential part of game design. It's a vital storytelling tool that allows players to navigate the game world. In this series, we'll create various camera control systems, ranging from switching between different cameras and lookout targets, to combining a camera's position and lookout constraint into an orbiting system. Go to File Project Manager. Create a new project using the empty template. Rename it Servo Camera and store it in a local folder. Stingray restarts and compiles your new project with the included assets. Open your project folder from the Asset Browser. Copy the content and script folders from the files provided with this movie into your local folder. When this is done, go to Edit, Level Testing, Refresh to recompile your project with the newly copied assets. Open the level Servo Camera and then click the green play icon to test the level. You can control the default camera by moving it using the WASD keys and aiming it with the mouse. If you're using a game controller, Stingray maps these inputs to the left and right thumbsticks respectively. You'll notice that moving the left thumbstick also controls servo in the level. This is because the same input control is currently used to trigger servo's movement logic. Press the escape key to return to the Stingray editor. This default camera is not in your project folder. Rather, Stingray loads it from a designated core folder when you compile and start your game. This core folder also contains the app kit, which is a collection of Lua scripts to provide support for basic gameplay needs such as camera control. You can find more information on managing your project's core resources and using the app kit in the Stingray help. For the scope of this tutorial, we'll forego the default camera and instead create a new one tailored to our needs. Go to the Create tab and select Camera. Place it in the level behind Servo, then right-click to exit Create mode. Switch from the perspective camera to your new camera. Position it to frame Servo accordingly. Switch back to the perspective camera, then go to the Level Flow tab. We need to tell Stingray to use the new camera at runtime instead of the default one. Start by connecting a set active camera node to a level loaded node. Then, with the camera unit selected, right click in the flow graph and select Create Level Unit. Connect the node to the set active camera node and then test the level to validate your changes. Now let's repeat this process by first duplicating the camera and then positioning it to frame servo from a different angle. In the Level Flow tab, duplicate the Set Active Camera node and connect it to the corresponding camera unit. To switch between these two cameras, we'll use a toggle node. Right-click the current level loaded connection and insert the toggle node. This will ensure that the first camera is triggered when the level is loaded. In addition, connect a keyboard button node to the toggle node to manually switch between cameras. Test your level. You can now switch cameras to your liking. This flow graph works well enough for two cameras, but we can optimize it to accommodate for even more cameras. For this, we'll convert this flow graph into a flow subroutine. A flow subroutine is analogous to a function in programming terms. It contains a set of tasks, here a flow graph, to execute whenever that subroutine is called. You can use flow subroutines in both the level flow and unit flow, as well as between projects. 
you can access your project's flows from the Asset Browser. We've included a camera switcher flow in the files provided with this movie. Double-click it to open it in the External Flow Editor. This flow graph uses the same set active camera node except that it's connected to a get unit variable node rather than a level unit node like the one we've been using. The value stored by this unit variable node is set by concatenating the camera string with an index variable. Once Stingray activates the corresponding camera, it either increments or resets the index based on whether it's reached the max camera's value. To pass camera inputs from the level flow to this flow graph, create an external input unit node. Set its name to camera1 unit in. Next, create a set unit variable node to store this unit value. Set its name to camera1. Duplicate this pair of nodes a few more times to allow for multiple cameras. Rename each one accordingly. Make sure that your variable names respect the camera index naming convention. Lastly, connect all the set unit variable nodes to the sequence nodes out one port. This sets the evaluation order so that Stingray initializes the variable nodes first. Save your flow graph and return to the level flow tab. Load your flow into a new flow subroutine node. Notice the node's input ports correspond to the external input unit nodes we just created. Connect this flow subroutine node to your flow graph, replacing the current toggle and set active camera nodes. Set the camera count in port to match the number of input cameras. Test your level to validate your changes. In the next movie, we'll cover how to create a name constraint between the cameras and their target.